It's a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The picture is twice as sharp as VHS. In a world before streaming, we actually had to put physical pieces of media into machines to watch the movies we wanted. And there was one type of media format that ruled them all. DVDs. Now, DVDs are still being sold in stores today. They haven't gone the way of the dodo like the now archaic floppy disk. And this goes to show just how strong of a grasp this format was able to get on the market. But why and how? In this video, we're gonna talk about how DVDs took over the world, what the state of the format is today, and what the future might look like. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's dive into it. Marty, shh, you'll scare the fish. But we're missing the big football Relax. game. Relax, my VHS home video recorder is taping it right now. When DVDs came out, we already had VHS, which stood for Video Home System. VHS was created by JVC and it offered much of the same benefits we'd get from DVDs themselves. They allowed us to purchase or rent a physical piece of media that would give us the ability to watch and re-watch our favorite movies and TV shows at home, over and over again. Having this ability was actually huge because before the invention of VHS, there wasn't really an affordable way of watching movies at home other than waiting for them to air on TV. And I say affordable because sure, in the early days, if you had a 35 millimeter projector and access to movies on film, you could technically watch them, but this wasn't attainable by the majority of people. VHS was also revolutionary for the film industry because it allowed for a second stream of revenue that studios would get after a film stopped showing in theaters. This allowed studios to take even more risks with the hopes of making their money back in the post theater run. But VHS wasn't the only format. When VHS originally released in 1976, we already had another format that was trying to seize the home video market. Sony's Betamax. VHS versus Betamax was a pretty massive format war with studios picking sides and both formats trying to capture as many homes and studios as possible to come out the winner. We experienced something similar during the 2000s between Sony's Blu-ray and HD DVD, but unlike the 2000s, Sony's format didn't win the war of the 70s. And it's actually pretty interesting because Betamax was considered to be the more superior format in terms of quality. It had better resolution, less video noise, better sound quality, and the machines that played back Betamax cassettes were better engineered. But VHS ended up being the winner because of one main advantage, the amount of time you could record onto them. When the two formats originally came out, Betamax could only record for one hour and VHS could record for two. A big selling point of both systems was that you could record your shows or sports when you left home. And with VHS being able to record for longer, it was a huge advantage. VHS was also a more simple system that helped in terms of cost. Betamax tried to combat and improve on a lot of its shortcomings, but it was too late because by the time it did, VHS was already the preferred format. But let's fast forward to the 90s, the decade where the DVD was born. This is DVD. DVDs first launched on November 1st, 1996 in Japan. And contrary to what you might think, they mostly launched with music video releases. When they initially released, DVD stood for digital video disc, but tech companies complained because they felt that they were being omitted from the format's many other uses, such as data storage, video games, and audio. Because of this, the acronym was later changed to stand for digital versatile disc. It wasn't until December 20th, 1996, when we saw the first movies release on DVDs. And this was still all happening in Japan because the format wasn't available in other places just yet. Blade Runner, Eraser, The Fugitive, and Point of No Return were the first movies released on DVD for consumer purchase. The format released in the United States in early 1997, with the first film released in the US being Twister. Now, DVDs weren't immediately adopted out of the gate because of a few reasons. According to Richard Cohen, the president of MGM's home entertainment division, some studios were very invested in the VHS rental model, and they didn't want to tinker with it. DVDs were also just another way to watch movies at home. People could already do this with VHS and migrating to yet another format would require dishing out money on newer equipment that in most people's eyes did pretty much the same thing. This new and shiny format also brought back memories of a previous format that didn't pan out too well, Laserdisc. Laser discs were fairly expensive and mostly targeted film buffs that were okay spending the extra cash for something slightly better, so they never really caught on with a wider market. And finally, another thing DVD had going against it was that it was in yet another format war, this time against DIVX. But this time around, the format war was a little bit different. It wasn't the same as Betamax and VHS because the two formats targeted different markets. DIVX was more of a rental or movie subscription offering, whereas DVD was meant for more traditional purchases. But being stuck in yet another format war was enough to make people hesitant to switch over before they knew who the winner would be. 
there were a lot of people that were burned by investing in the losing side of the Betamax vs VHS format war and no one wanted to repeat that. But in the end, DVDs won out and holy crap, they absolutely took over the market. The sound is so incredibly clear, you can hear a pin drop. DVDs began to outsell VCRs for the first time in the United States in 2001, where at the time, one out of every four US households owned a DVD player. DVD players were becoming cheaper and at their peak in 2005, you can find them for under $50. And in 2007, about 80% of Americans owned a DVD player. This was more than VCRs at their peak and it was also more than cable TV and personal computers at the time. And at the beginning of the 2010s, DVDs were still dominating the market, accounting for about three quarters of video sales. But why? What made them so special that enticed millions of homes to switch over from VHS? Well, despite the points I made earlier, DVDs had a lot going for them that ended up enticing studios, rental companies, retailers, and home audiences to switch over in swarms. First off, when DVDs originally came out, they were looked at as a format that was difficult to copy, unlike VHS, which at the time was easily copyable. They were also a format that was region lockable, which prevented consumers from other countries getting movies on DVD before they were actually released in their country. All of this was very enticing to studios because it would in theory allow them to make more money and have more control over where and when movies were being distributed. But as we all know, all of these benefits towards studios were very short lived and actually backfired in the long run, which we're going to talk about in a later section. DVDs were also enticing to consumers, retailers, and video rental stores because they were much more compact, meaning you could transport them at a lower price and store more on shelves. It was especially enticing for video rental stores because, I don't know if you remember, but I remember how at Blockbuster they would just keep one case for each movie up front and keep the discs separate in the back or just behind the counter. Once you were ready to rent a movie, they'd just plop it into a generic Blockbuster case. The discs themselves were tiny compared to a VHS, so having this ability saved a ton of space for video rental stores. And once video rental stores began strictly dealing with DVDs, it was time for everyone else to make the jump. Plus, you didn't have to remember to rewind them and possibly pay a fee if you forgot. DVDs were also preferred over VHS for their longevity. While VHSs could last from 10 to 25 years, DVDs were said to last anywhere from 30 to 100 years depending on the type and quality of the disc. Movies themselves don't expire and people would still want to watch really old films at home, so rental stores wanted something that could stand the test of time. And consumers liked the idea because the things they purchased would last longer. This was very attractive because DVDs weren't only used for watching movies, they could be used for video games and also general data storage, which brings us to yet another reason why DVDs became so popular. They could be used for many different reasons. From storing music, to movies, to photos, to games, really anything digital could be stored on them. This also led to DVDs being supported by a variety of different devices. You were no longer beholden to your living room to watch movies. If you wanted to, you can watch them on your computer, or a portable DVD player which was now possible due to the size of the format. And the DVD format was actually a big contributor as to why the PlayStation 2 was the best selling console of all time. Households could buy the PS2 and have both a DVD player and a game console in one device, providing the best of both worlds, making both parents and children happy. And although the DVD format helped the PlayStation 2 become more popular, the PlayStation 2 also helped DVDs become more adopted since more households could make use of them. The PS2 was released in March of 2000 in Japan, October of 2000 in North America, and November in Europe. At that time, VHS was still the more popular format, but its market share was dwindling. In 2003, DVD rentals overtook that of VHS and the rest was history. But DVDs had many more benefits for movie lovers than just the ones I mentioned. When the format was first being pushed to the masses, it was marketed as having better picture and audio quality. This was very interesting for cinephiles that were starting to set up some sweet home theaters. DVDs were set to have double the vertical resolution of VHS, but this information was slightly misleading and propelled by the manufacturers themselves. Sure. Theoretically, DVDs could achieve better resolutions, but the limiting factor of what resolution you could watch was your TV or DVD player. And TVs were already being maxed out with VHSs. And when it came to sound quality, this again was highly debatable because many claimed that DVDs digital audio format lacked the warmth that you would get from the analog format of VHS. And in all honesty, after researching all the reasons why DVDs became so popular, I actually think the three main reasons are convenience, which we've just talked about a bit, the extra content, and piracy. On the topic of convenience, you didn't have to rewind or fast forward them. And if you wanted to rewatch your favorite scene over and over again, you could just pick it from a scene selection menu and jump straight into it. And they were also smaller, which I've already mentioned. But the extra content was a big selling point. 
Before DVDs, it was fairly difficult to learn more about how a movie was made or watch some deleted or behind the scenes footage or even listen to a voiceover commentary from the cast and crew. To get any extra content, you'd either have to catch it on TV or read up on it in a magazine. And that's only if the movie was big enough to warrant this extra effort of producing that extra content. But now, this extra content was coming packaged with almost every movie. Remember, this was a time before YouTube and the ability to just access these things so easily. This may not have been enough for everyone to get really excited about DVDs, but I remember from my childhood being bored and just clicking through the menus, watching random behind the scenes footage or bloopers for various films just to learn more about them. When I saw a DVD that said something on the cover like two hours of extra footage, I was sold and really wanted it. And the final reason for why DVDs became so popular was because of piracy. Once DVD burners became more mainstream and all the theft prevention slash region locking was bypassed, anyone with a computer could burn a DVD which meant it was much easier to get movies. On top of that, people could just download movies online and then burn them onto a DVD. In 2004, the fears around piracy and how much DVDs were contributing to it was in full swing. And you may actually remember those you wouldn't steal a car commercials from back in the day where people were joking around how they would definitely download a car if they could. It's ironic because one of the main reasons that studios were so keen to embrace DVDs was because it would combat piracy. But in the end, they just helped propel it even further. Blu-ray gives you unparalleled sharpness. Mamma mia. Depth and detail. Nice. In the mid to late 2000s, the world was in a full-blown transition from standard definition to high definition. And with a higher resolution came the need for yet another new format. So along comes Blu-ray. Blu-ray was also in a format war against HD DVD, but it ultimately won out. Maybe in part due to the PlayStation 3 using Blu-rays for their system, as well as being a pretty decent Blu-ray player. Again, two birds with one stone. Happy kids, happy parents. The thing is that Blu-ray never really caught on as fast or as much as DVDs. For most people, DVDs were already enough. Not everyone cares about the better quality, and on top of that, to get the full benefit of Blu-ray discs, you needed to upgrade your entire system, not just the player. Blu-ray was also pretty expensive, which added even more friction to adopting the format. But ultimately, the biggest reason for Blu-ray not becoming as widely adopted as DVD and the decline of DVD itself was because of the rise of streaming. Before Blu-rays were really able to hit their stride, streaming was in full swing, even offering the ability to watch HD content online. And home internet connections were getting faster and more affordable so more people could sign up for streaming services or just pirate the HD movies themselves since Blu-rays faced the same issues as DVDs where people could just rip them. By 2017, digital streaming services overtook the sales of both DVDs and Blu-rays for the first time and we've never looked back. DVD. See it. Buy it. Own it. So what does the future landscape of DVD or physical media in general look like? We've already seen vinyl and tape cassettes have a resurgence because of the nostalgia that they bring. Trends and technologies tend to have a resurgence with younger generations when they get to the age their parents were during a certain time. We've seen a huge 80s renaissance, now we're witnessing a big 90s boom, so maybe we'll be experiencing a 2000s resurgence. But that doesn't mean DVD will come back. We didn't really see the comeback of CDs just yet, and maybe we never will. Vinyl and tapes are considered analog, and besides the nostalgia reasons, many swear by analog technology because of the arguably better quality it offers, so who knows? And besides, before we see DVDs making a comeback, we still need to see the revival of VHS. But what do you think? Do you still buy physical media such as Blu-rays or DVDs? I still do sometimes. I buy vinyls and Blu-rays on occasion for the purpose of collecting and having something more physical that I can actually put up on a shelf. But I want to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. Anyways, that's everything for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We have a lot more great content on the way and would love to take you along for the ride. But until next time, have a good one.